some of the largest whales in the world can be significantly over 100 tonnes in weight, well over 10 times the weight of even the heaviest elephant. Now these animals die in warm, shallow water, a great many predators and scavengers which will fairly rapidly demolish the carcass. However, if the body washes up onshore, ends up in cold, deep water, it's another matter entirely. The body of a whale washing up onshore represents a significant issue for the authorities in the area where it arrives. In general, a deceased whale is found on gently sloping beaches where the tide can push the mass of the whale onshore. These locations also tend to be relatively near human habitation. A whale carcass may attract large numbers of animal scavengers with the prospect of an easy meal. But the body is so large that scavengers have a minimal impact on disposing of the body. Instead, the process of decomposition may start inside the whale, produce significant amounts of gas. Fortunately, that gas often has no easy means of exiting the water and airtight body of the whale. Instead, it may build up to such an extent the corpse explodes, scattering huge amounts of decomposing flesh of a nearby area, putting the lives at risk of anybody standing too close, as well as being deeply unpleasant. In order to prevent this kind of harm, local authorities often try to dispose of the body and are generally faced with three sensible options. They can try to tow the body out into deeper water. They may need to tow it a substantial distance to avoid it just returning back to shore again on a later tide. Another option is to bury it in a local landfill site. However, it may not be the required lifting equipment to drag it up. Also, the action of moving the whale around may be enough to trigger an explosion. So removal on the route needs careful planning. Finally, the whale can be turned into a useful fertiliser, which, while it might smell a little, the volume of a highly valuable fertiliser can be extracted from a single whale carcass is immense. If anything, it can be too much for the locals to process and use. Must be mentioned here that there are also some less sensible options tried, including dynamiting the body, which just tends to make the matter worse, and scattering the debris, scaring off scavengers, and endangering the locals. So what happens if the whale dies in deep, cold water? Well, some of the whale will be eaten by predators and scavengers while it's in relatively shallow water. However, the body of the whale can slowly sink to the ocean floor. At low levels, however, very little light reaches the ocean floor, which results in the ocean floor being almost devoid of life. So there are very few large predators living at this level and very few large scavengers. The whale form being out of reaches of the masses of large predators and scavengers, said smaller animals like hagfish, sleeper sharks and grenadiers are attracted to the body of the whale. Now, because the body is so much larger than these mobile scavengers, it can take up to two years for these scavengers to extract what they can from the whale's soft tissues. After which, I have to move on in hope of finding another whale form or a similar food source. After these come what are known as the enrichment opportunists, like crustaceans and bristle worms, which take up residence on the bones or in nearby surroundings that have been enriched by the debris from the whale. These again might take another two years to fully exploit all the remaining resources. The final stage involves species which can anaerobically break down the bones of the whale. Some of these bacteria can take decades to finally remove all trace of the whale from the sea floor. These three stages of decomposition of a whale represent a small, gradually changing ecosystem with all of the members of which depended upon the whale carcass as a principal source of food, resulting in the feeding of a whole host of organisms as they slowly recycle the nutrition stored up in the whale.